Let's get this so that you can only see one person talking. Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Becky Ditchfield here coming, for, uh, coming to you live from my basement where we've, we are in for another weather lesson for the day today. Last week, we talked about land spout tornadoes. And I mentioned in there, I said another lesson for another time, the monsoon. So I thought I would go ahead and talk about the monsoon today. Now the monsoon is not something that we would anticipate for at least another month. So this is forward thinking, but it's something to keep in mind because it is something that certainly can happen across Colorado, especially for our friends up in the mountains. If you're watching in our mountain towns, you're very familiar if you've lived up there for some time with the monsoon and how it, it can impact your weather greatly. So let's talk about the definition of monsoon. A monsoon is actually a seasonal wind pattern. It's not referencing rain showers that can happen from it um, themselves. It's actually referencing a wind pattern that sets up. And I'll go over that here in just a minute, what that looks like. It can be wet and it can be dry. For example, down across Arizona and New Mexico, oftentimes during the summer and into the fall, you'll start to hear about things called haboobs, those really big wind slash dust storms that pick up and they are, create this amazing video of this dust just billowing across, um, across a landscape. That can happen from the monsoon. What happens is we get the monsoon going, that wind flow pattern, that creates um, a, a chance for some showers and thunderstorms. Now, it is so dry down in New Mexico and down in Arizona that as it tries to rain from those showers and thunderstorms, all of that rain evaporates. And evaporation is a cooling process. Cool air sinks rapidly. When you've got that rapidly sinking air, you get this giant, sometimes it can be a microburst, but you can all, that can also create these big wind storms because the rain's not hitting the ground. So instead you're getting a lot of wind and a lot of dust and you see those haboobs from the monsoonal flow. This typically happens um, across our region and Colorado is about as far north as it goes between mid-June and early September. You are gonna hear my children screaming in the background. That's life, right? Um, so, and it can occur in locations worldwide. Um, our monsoon is gonna be very different from what they see in India. What we experience for our monsoon is called the North American monsoon. Um, it's a different kind of wind pattern that sets up in other parts of the globe, but we certainly still can see the effects of it. And it is caused by land and sea differences. So let's go ahead and talk about what we need to be in place um, for this monsoon to happen. And I'm gonna start with what's going on today because today is, is very different, but you kind of get an idea of, of when, we're, when I start talking about the jet stream, what's happening. So as we're taking a look at our satellite radar, you can see that out to our west, it's very dry. And then out to the east, we've got these showers that are moving through the upper Midwest, even a threat for severe weather down across the southeast. Well, that's because we've got this weather pattern that is set up. Our jet stream, which is gonna be depicted by these arrows that I have there on your screen, sits about 30 to 40,000 feet above our heads. So these really powerful winds that basically drive storm systems across the country. So long as a storm system is within that jet, it's going to move from west to east across the United States. These are very, very strong winds. And right now we've got this area of high pressure that's out to our west, keeping us pretty dry. And then we've got that area of low pressure that sits to our east. And that's what's bringing in their chances for some showers and storms. Now, over the next couple of days, we're gonna see a disturbance get caught up in that jet stream. It's gonna carry in a chance for more wind and some showers and thunderstorms here to the front range. Now, when we've got the monsoon, that monsoonal flow that is setting up, this is what our jet stream typically looks like. You're gonna notice that arc, which is about where that area of high pressure is gonna be, is a little bit further to the east, generally situated east of Colorado. And we are seeing an area of low pressure that is down across parts of California. So under that area of high pressure is something called a subtropical high. This has to develop in order for us to see a true monsoon flow set up here across the Southwest. Air, uh, air around high pressure flows in a, in a clockwise circulation. 
So as you can see from this picture, it's going to pick up moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to draw it across Texas, on up through New Mexico, and to Colorado. So now we've got a little bit of humidity that's moving here into our state. The other thing that must be in place is going to be the monsoon low set up just off the California coast. This is going to be bringing in moisture from the Gulf of California. Air flows counterclockwise around an area of low pressure. So you can see how it draws in that moisture from the Gulf of California, Pacific Coast, and it's going to be pushing it up across Mexico, into New Mexico, and also into Colorado. So now you've got two sources that are bringing in some humidity to our state. We've got mountains in place, and it's in the middle of summer. So you've got all this hot air, and hot air rises. When hot air rises and it has a lot of humidity, you generally start to get the development of some showers and thunderstorms. And our, mom, and our mountains really help out with that as well. As these storms build and they're fed by all of this humidity, eventually you're gonna get some rain that also develops. Now we are sitting south of the jet stream. So the showers and thunderstorms that have now developed across Colorado's mountains and sometimes even the front range don't have anywhere to go. They don't have a highway, that jet stream, that's directing them. So they're going to be very slow moving storms and that creates a big problem when you're talking about flash flooding and when you're talking about um, burn scars across the mountain, that can be a very dangerous situation for a lot of our mountain communities. So our friends who are watching up in the mountains need to have a plan in place for these days when we could see slow moving thunderstorms over your area and you need to seek higher ground or you need to evacuate very quickly because a flash flood is headed your way. We've come a long way in trying to predict flash floods and when they're going to happen and where they're going to be. Uh, that's certainly something that we can give you a heads up on in the forecast. If you have a weather radio, it's great to keep around. Our phones also have a great capability of keeping you alert to when a flash flood warning or a flash flood watch has been issued for your area. That's something that you definitely need to prepare for. Now, along with that, I also wanted to talk a little bit about, so that's the monsoon, the monsoonal flow and how it can create the kind of weather we get here across, across Colorado. Uh, but I also really wanted to talk about um, that rain and how it, can, how it can develop. So I've got a little bit of an experiment for us all here. And I did this a little while ago. I'm gonna change the view so you guys can see. I did this a little while ago. Oops. Isn't that working? There we go. You can see my computer that I was just watching. Uh -huh. But I did this a little while ago when um, earlier today, and it's basically a rain shower in a jar. And all you're going to need is I have this big pitcher, um, pitcher of water, and then you're going to need some shaving cream. Right, and then you're gonna need a dropper. Got a little bit. I got this from one of my kids' experimental experiment boxes. And then you'll need some more water, preferably colored with some food coloring, and I use blue. So I did this a little bit earlier, and you can see it looked a lot cooler before, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour, we're gonna put in that water, and then we're gonna put the shaving cream on top of the water. And then we're gonna drop in the blue colored water on top of that. So let's do this and see how this turns out. Um, that did look like rain a little while ago, but it took a long time to get there for it to all fall into place. So I tweaked this experiment a little bit and we're gonna see if it works. So I'm going to... Put in my shaving cream. Oh, you can't even see. There we go. I'm going to put it in my shaving cream. That's why. All right, so now I've got this cloud of shaving cream, right, sitting over my, warm, over my water. Now, I made this water really warm um, because I wanted to see the rain effects pretty quickly. I made this water really cold. I added some ice to it. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our dropper and we are going to fill it up with the blue cold water. And we're going to start dropping it onto our cloud. Now imagine that this is that month. This is that monsoon moisture coming in around the subtropical high. 
and that area of low pressure that sits just off the California coast. And it's just fueling these clouds that are now developing here across the Front Range. And it's gonna continue to feed those clouds until those clouds can no longer hold any more of that water. And once that happens, once those clouds can no longer hold any more of that water, rain is going to start to fall. Oh, it is working. And you can see that rain kind of coming down out of that cloud. Here, let me put that behind it so you can see, right? And essentially, that's very similar to what happens when you have when you've got those, those clouds that are forming up in the mountains and they're being fueled by thunderstorms and then they can no longer hold the moisture that's being drawn up into them and it just starts to rain. This is a fun experiment that you can do at home. It does work with um, water that's the same temperature. It just takes a while um, so that you are aware. You can kind of, can you see? You can kind of see. Oh some of those streaks that are coming underneath the cloud base, simulating the rain from my, <laughs> this is what I showed, this is what I showed you earlier. Now all of that rain is from, it's just pouring out of that cloud. It's just reached the bottom of that, bottom of that jar. So a fun experiment that you can kind of play with or do, do at home if you want to kind of show you to show you what happens as those showers and thunderstorms start to form across Colorado's mountains, across our front range, um, and as you have all of that humidity that's uh, fueling into those thunderstorms. Those storms can't hold the water anymore, and it begins to rain. And then those storms don't go anywhere for a while, and we potentially could see some flash flooding. And, and that's what we're really watching out for during monsoon season. Again, that's gonna be from June until September. So that's something to keep in the back of your mind um, and to watch out for. And if you don't have a plan in place and you live up in the mountains, get that plan ready just in case uh, the weather turns on you during the day. All right, guys, I hope everyone is staying safe. That's it for today and you're staying healthy. Um, I hope you're having fun while you're um, still stuck at home. And, um, and we'll see you next time. Bye.